Hi there and Happy New Year to all of our listeners. Today, learn how discussing New Year's resolutions offers a window into English vocabulary and British culture. Have you ever wondered how people in Britain kick off their new year? This podcast about New Year's resolutions will give you both an insight into the psyche, the mind of British people and what their priorities in life are. And it'll give you some great vocabulary for discussing people's personal goals and ambitions. Making New Year's resolutions is a tradition where people promise themselves that they'll make positive changes in their lives. I have made some loose New Year's resolutions, so if you keep listening to the end of this podcast, I'll tell you what mine are. And perhaps you'll be spurred on to make your New Year's resolutions by listening to this podcast, as well as practising your English, of course. So it's the start of a new year, and why not kickstart your English learning? This verb to kickstart in English comes from the world of motorcycling, motorbikes in other words. And the verb to kickstart, K-I-C-K-S-T-A-R-T, sometimes with a hyphen in the middle. That's when you use a metal lever at the back of a motorbike, which, if you kick it, starts the engine. We also use this verb idiomatically. It means, according to Collins Dictionary, to restart a process that has stopped. So if you've taken a break in your English learning over the holidays, it's time to get back into English. Remember, consistency is the key to language learning. It's OK to take breaks, but what matters is your long term commitment. I've had a break from my French learning over the holiday, but I have returned to listening daily to my French. And remember, if you find our podcast difficult, you could begin 2024 with our most common 500 words course. That'll get your basic English vocabulary sorted out and everything else will be much easier after that. You know where to look. This course is available on our website, adeptenglish.com. So what about people's New Year's resolutions this year? Well, YouGov, that's Y-O-U-G-O-V, that's an international market research company based in the UK, but with operations in Europe, North America, the Middle East and Asia. So I'm using their data, that's YouGov's data, on New Year's resolutions for some interesting statistics for the UK. It says that only 31% of those who made resolutions in 2023 kept them all. And that only 16% of Britons who made New Year's resolutions in 2023 didn't keep any of them. What I also noticed that was interesting, 29% of 18 to 24 year olds make New Year's resolutions, but only 6% of the over 65s do. Maybe people learn with age that they don't keep to them. And women make resolutions more than men. I do think it's a good idea to have a review at the start of the year, a refocus on your overall direction and your life and where you're putting your energy. It's like a mini life review at the start of each year. It's important to do this. Like the seven habits of highly successful people author suggests, start with the end in mind. So think about your goals. Unless you do this type of thinking where you helicopter over your life and take the long view, you could end up not really thinking much about it and life happening to you rather than you actively choosing your direction. So what do people in the UK resolve to do in their resolutions? 
Well, predictably, 56% of people making New Year's resolutions are concerned with improving their physical fitness, doing more exercise, in other words. I've spoken before on this podcast about how the gyms are fully subscribed and full in January and about how it appears to tail off in February and beyond. This is presumably how gyms make their money. But this resolution to improve physical fitness is by far the most common one for people. 